I would say my home is daring, colorful, and playful, but also elevated. I'm sorry, I did four words, but it needs four words to describe it. Hi, my name is Danny Daisy, and if you saw my most recent home tour, you know I love places packed with color, and I'm gonna show you some unexpected and exciting ways that you can add color to your space. Cabinets are an amazing way to add color to your house, and they're also very good for beginners. All you have to do is take them off the wall. We recommend using a sponge roller, and I personally recommend using a bold, fun paint. As you can see, we went with green in our kitchen. I believe this color is called pesto, which is very fitting for a kitchen. Uh, once we put these babies back in, switched out the hardware, it really popped and brought life to a kitchen that was once Kind of sad. One of my favorite ways to add color to a space, whether it's my space or a client space, is with murals. An easy way to get started with a mural is to do something simple and geometric. This one's actually pretty easy, believe it or not. It's just a half arc and a circle. They cross in the middle and then painted each a different color and then the pink where they intersect. A lot of people get very intimidated by murals. The edge work can be a little bit tricky, but you just have to keep a steady hand and make sure you have the perfect amount of paint on your brush, and you got this. If you like a statement like I do, tile is the way to go. Tile can add so much pattern, color to a space, and really make a bold statement, which I obviously love to do. I loved this tile so much, and I'm going with a little bit of a circle theme in the house that we ended up using this on our kitchen counters and on the steps outside of our house on your way in. Another great thing tile can do is tie in the different colors in a room. As you can see here, we have the black, yellow, and pink, which you see throughout our living room, and it's really a great way to bring it all together and have it make sense. One of the most forgotten surfaces in the home is the ceiling. I mean, look up. This is a statement ceiling. Me and my fiance wallpapered this ourselves. It was a labor of love, but I think it was well worth it. I really wanted to draw eyes upward because this house came with amazing bones and these cove ceilings. So by adding light fixtures and a statement ceiling, it really draws attention to those little details. If you don't have the patience to wallpaper your ceiling, you can maybe do a fun mural on your ceiling. We have a very graphic statement one in one of the rooms at our house. And just painting your ceiling a fun color can do wonders for a room. Another room, another statement ceiling, but we did something very special with this one. Originally, the ceiling was just all white with recessed lighting, and it didn't feel special or interesting or have any character. So what we ended up doing was painting the ceiling, adding this trim border ourselves, wallpapering it and switching out the canned lighting. So many people don't realize you don't have to have recess or canned lighting. I find it to be the ugliest lighting in the world. And there's so many ways you can add character and interest by switching that out. As you can see here, we went with a semi-flush mount that is absolutely gorgeous. It's really a shame a lot of new build homes decide to take away the character that ceilings or lighting offers, but you can really bring it back in a major way by switching out the lighting. We ended up switching out almost all of the recessed lighting in our house for something really cute and something special, and I think it made a huge impact in our kitchens, our bedrooms, and here in the den area as well. I feel like a painted accent wall is baby steps when it comes to adding color to your house, but if you wanna change it up a little bit, I love doing a half wall split. You can finish it off really nicely with these trim pieces that are basically just nailed into the wall. Philip and I did this ourselves. Then we just painted the top green and the bottom pink. That way we get a few different colors in the space and I feel like it's more of a statement. Half walls have been one of my favorite things to experiment with lately in my house and in client spaces. Sometimes I like to even do like wallpaper on the top and then a paint color on the bottom. You can flip it. You can have so much fun. There are so many endless options. This room is a perfect example on how color can actually make a room feel bigger. This was an all white, very small room. And when we painted the walls, the ceilings, you walk in here and it's a grand statement and the room feels big and colorful and bold. 
The three main colors in this room are yellow, this sort of, it's called Spanish peanut is the color, but it's sort of like a brownish red that's really beautiful, and then a pink as well. When we were originally painting this room, the yellow and the reddish color needed lots of layers. Some paints just require more layers than others. And that can be a very much trust the process moment. A few layers in, I was scared. I was like, I made a terrible mistake designing this room with these wacky colors. But after we finished all the coats and added this pink trim accent to break it up in the middle, it really worked and now we have the colors really playing together and flowing very well. I was very afraid at one point that it kind of had a mustard ketchup vibe, but it ended up working out in the end and you really have to trust the process when it comes to paint. This is my message for people who are afraid of color. You can always paint it back. Paint is not permanent, it's actually the opposite. It's extremely easy to paint something yourself and then to paint it back if it doesn't work out. If you can't tell whether it's my clothing line or my interior design, I am a sucker for coordinating moment. And the best way to achieve that in a room is doing some artwork on your own. That way you can add whatever color makes the room work and ties together. As you can see here, we painted this mural in our office and I did this original painting for the space as well. And it all matches and flows and looks great together. It can be a little intimidating to put paint to canvas or paint on the wall, but if you have an artsy friend of yours that you can ask for help, it's the perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. I think going for an abstract art look is great because it leaves a little room for error because it's abstract anyways. A lot of people tell me they're afraid to do a mural or a painting, and I felt the same way for so many years until I actually just decided to do it. And then I realized it's not as hard as it looks, and it can be a really fun, enjoyable process. And then you're so proud in the end because you did it yourself. Something I recommend if you're a little afraid to go right to the wall is to actually draw it up first, whether it's on a piece of paper or on a tablet. That's usually how I do most of my artwork. And then I transfer it to the wall when I'm feeling good and confident about it. Thanks for watching. And I hope this inspires you to be a little more daring with the design in your home. What are your favorite ways to get colorful? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade for more videos with decor tips just like this. Catch you next time.